It is recorded by Jewish historian Josephus that Emmaus in Jerusalem could well be the place earlier called Ayalon, the place where the sun stood still until General Joshua's battle with the Amorites ended in victory. On the third day, after Pesach Passover in the year 4 BCE, something also happened there that day. Two men, distressed, discouraged, and defeated at the terrible death of their leader and friend, Yeshua Jesus of Nazareth, walked back home to Emmaus village from the terror of that day three days ago. As they walked on the road discussing the events, they were joined by a man who didn't seem to know of recent events in Jerusalem, but who did seem to have answers to the man's pointed questions about the event, explaining who the Messiah was from Moses. This is the path we tread, the ancient path from Moses to Messiah, tracing our steps from the Hebrew roots of our Christian faith to the road of Emmaus village to the 21st century today. Rev Media presents The Road to Emmaus Village. Studies of the complete gospel from Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. To the Torah, Nebi'im, and Ketuvim. To Messiah in the Brit Hadasha. In the Hebraic perspective of our Christian faith. Shalom. This is the continuing account of that happy day. As they came to Cleophas Alphaeus' house, they bade him stay the night and sit with us at the evening meal. Then the man took up the piece of matzah, made a baraka, blessed the father for the meal, broke it, and handed it to them. Suddenly their eyes were opened. Then the man disappeared. They leapt to their feet, headed toward the door, talking excitedly, saying, didn't our hearts burn when he spoke to us on the road, opening up the Tanakh to us? We must tell the others. They raced back toward Yerushalayim to tell the eleven and the rest of their brethren huddled together at an upper room away from the Roman authorities. At Aihalon, where the long overnight battle of Joshua ended in the defeat of the Amorites, the sun stood still as a witness to the victory won there. At Amaus, in proclamation of his victory, Yeshua Jesus opened the eyes of the man to who he is down through history from Moses, the Messiah of Israel. There we believe that time and eternity met when Messiah bridged the connection between his eternal I am and his divine conquest and victory as the risen son of God on earth. Long prevented from recognizing Jesus as the Jewish Yeshua, who was Torah of servant, who knew the Shema by heart, who kept the Shabbat and the Moedim feast, so must we let the Jewish Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, open our eyes and walk with us so that we may fully understand through his Hebraic roots and perspective, his teachings and correctly in context, apply this to our lives. And also say, didn't our hearts burn inside us as he spoke to us on the road opening up the Torah, the prophets, the Tanakh, the Older Testament to us. Walk with us on our journey in the road to Amaus village. Shalom, peace. We begin by thanking Abba, our Father, Yeshua Mashiach, Jesus Christ, His Son, and the Rak HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, and our friends who pray with us to continue producing this Yeshua-centered Messianic educational TV program. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Bereshit, or Genesis 2-3, Shabbat blessings be upon all us. Let us now honor Abba, our Father, and set this day apart with this prayer. Abba Father, Barukata Adonai Eloheinu Meleka Olam, blessed art thou, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has kept us in life and preserved us, 
and enabled us to reach this season. In Yeshua, Jesus' name, amen. Blinded by not knowing Jesus as the Jewish Yeshua, there didn't seem to be a connect from the Older Testament to the New. As more and more Christians appreciate Yeshua Jesus and all his Jewishness in the backdrop of Israel, the Jews, and the Hebrew Scriptures, verses in the Newer Testament become clearer and they click into place. There comes a genuine understanding and desire to live life according to God's standard, the Torah. Today we will learn more. Is Torah for Christians? On to our study. Is Torah for Christians? Yes, because the Torah is God's word. Many of the verses in Moshe's first five sections or books record, God spoke to Moshe, speak to the sons of Israel. In response, Exodus or Shemot 19.8 says, And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. When building the Mishkan, the tabernacle, the key repeated phrase, according to all that the Lord commanded Moshe, they did, is mentioned 20 times in Shemot, Exodus chapters 38, 39, 40, showing explicit obedience to God, His instructions, His teachings to His Word. Secondly, because Yeshua, our prime model and master whom we imitate, not Moshe, as some do, not Rav Shaol, or Rabbi, or Pastor so-and-so. Yeshua was Torah of servant, and the Torah is all about him. In John 5, 39, he says that the Hebrew scriptures plainly testify of him. You search the scriptures, it is these that bear witness of me. Thirdly, because his apostles and disciples were Torah of servant, except the son of perdition. Fourthly, Paul, or Rav Shaul, was raised a Torah of servant Jew who studied under Rabbi Gamaliel in Jerusalem, and he regularly attended synagogue, and in Thessalonica, for three Shabbat days, he reasoned out of the Torah. When Rav Shaul wrote Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. What he meant primarily in the Hebrew perspective is the Tanakh, the Older Testament, which contained the Torah, even before the Brit Hadasha, the Gospels and the Apostolic Writings were compiled. Yes, the Torah is for Christians who believe in Yeshua as the Messiah. For many reasons, it is important even vital for Christians to know and study the Torah as part of the full counsel of God, as not having been done away with, passé, outdated, or old. Brethren, Devarim, or Deuteronomy 10, 12 says, Moshe speaking, And now, Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to love Him, and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and to keep the Lord's commandments and His statutes, which I am commanding you today for your good. By His grace, we get to know Torah as the way we are to live our lives, God's way. Our beloved Christian nation, the Philippines, would have had the moral conviction and blessings of the Torah were it taught to every man, woman, and child, even at age five. Lastly, let us make this clear. Obeying Torah is not a means to earn our salvation. For by grace we have been saved through faith, and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works that no one should boast. Ephesians 2, 8-9. We obey Torah because we love God. We love God His way, love God with all our heart, all our soul, all our might, not to earn our salvation our way. In closing, brethren, do you still think of Torah as law, as no longer for us, saying that since we are no longer under the law, but under grace, we do not have to obey the Torah, God's instructions and teachings? Could this be the reason why some miss out on the promised blessings, instead get the promised curses listed in Deuteronomy 28? Do we have a dim view of our spiritual inheritance simply because we do not comprehend the mind of Yeshua, who is the living Torah? 
It can mean a harrowing roller coaster ride up and down in our spiritual journey, as against a blessed walk found in Deuteronomy 5.33. You shall walk in all the way which the Lord your God has commanded you, that you may live, that all may be well with you, and that you may prolong your days in the land which you shall possess. Yeshua is the way, direct in Hebrew. Open your hearts to let the Ruach HaKodesh draw you close into this end-time move of God. Yes, the Torah is for Christians today. Next week, to be true Talmudim or disciples, we will take up why we must study the Torah in context in the light of the Brit. Study the parasha for next week. Find out more as you watch Road to Emmaus Village, Saturdays every Shabbat. In the next portion, meet the Messianic rabbis. We are blessed to have a true yoke fellow from New York, New Jersey, USA, who will help open our eyes to this Shabbat's double parasha reading, Behar, meaning on the mount, and Beku Kotai, on my statutes. Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. Stay tuned. Ancient Hebrew scriptures foretold of the Anointed One, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His Word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation. Three brief overview sections in relation to this particular parash reading. Section one, the Torah. Section two, how this parash fits in the New Testament. Shalom, my mishpuka. Welcome to another teaching of the Road to Emmaus, RTE 006, Bahar. In this particular teaching, we're actually going to put together two parash, two Torah portions. We're going to go from Leviticus 25, Vayikra 25, verse 1, through Vayikra 27, verse 34. The main context of this particular Torah portion is talking about the year of Jubilee. I wanted to wear a, a special tie for this particular teaching. It's my tie with the man with the shofar on, because it says in Vayikra chapter 25, verse 11, and it goes through verse 18, but we're only going to read verse 11, and I'll explain it. That 50th year will be the, a yovel for you. In that year, you are not to sow, harvest what grows by itself, or gather the grapes of the untended vines. The 50th year is what's called the yovel in Hebrew, but we may know it as the year of jubilee. When the captives are returned, when everything is returned to its original owner. So what happens is if you had sold a piece of property to your fellow brother, uh, your fellow Israelite, let's say I'm from Benjamin and I sold something to Yehuda, I would then get it returned to me in the 50th year. If I had not purchased it back by then, everything, everything, and the Lord is talking about everything in these chapters, gets returned back to its original owner. It's a very interesting concept that we need to understand so that when we get into the Brit HaDashah, the New Testament, you will understand when we get to that reading how important it is, okay? It talks about returning, even if it was only one year that you sold it, but if it was 49 years ago where you sold it, you finally get everything returned back to 
its original owner. So the original lands that you had all surrounding you that were given to you, these, these certain homes that were on those lands were all returned back to you. It was only lent for a certain time period. Okay, it's a very interesting concept to understand the Yovel, the year of Jubilee. Okay, also in this um, parasha, in chapter 26, it talks about the Lord building his tabernacle with us, of him dwelling with us, of wanting to be with us, to dwell with his people. How many of us would not want Adonai? Yehovah, to dwell with us, to be with us. So he talks about making this tabernacle, not making idols for ourselves, not having statues of people, statues of different deities. The Lord did not want any of that to be in his place. He wanted to put his tabernacle to dwell with us. And now that the temple is not there anymore, it dwells within us. And we are the tabernacle of God. So are you putting any idols into your life that you need to get rid of, when, especially when it comes to the year of Jubilee? Okay? And the Lord talks about here in verse, chapter 26, verse 16, Then for, I my, for my part will do this to you. I will bring terror upon you that if, if you don't do what he asks, he will bring terror. But if we are doing what he asks, he will protect us. He will provide for us. He will give us rain in its proper time with the proper amount. He will give us food. Our, our animals will have the proper amount of babies. But right now in the world, we see so much of this not happening. In Europe, miscarrying of lambs and animals being deformed, children being deformed all around the globe, more so than ever before. It's because He's not tabernacling with us because we're not tabernacling with him. Now, we come back in our Brit Hadashah reading, in our New Testament reading, why it's so important to understand how everything will return back to its original owner. When we look at the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 27, and we look at verse 15 through 17, we see an event where Yeshua was going to be given up. It was between him and Barabbas. Look at verse 15. It was the governor's custom during the festival to set free one prisoner whom the crowd asked for. So here, during this time, Pilate was doing a custom of setting a captive free during what would be the Jubilee year. Maybe it wasn't that year. Well, let's not go to that point right now. But what he is, is setting a captive free. A choice that was going to be made by the people to follow God's ordained word and not giving up Yeshua since he had done nothing wrong of allowing him to go to the crucifixion and be put on the cross by the Romans, okay? So here, there was a captive being set free. And how that ties together with the year of Jubilee is if you look in Luke chapter 4, verse 18 and 19. The spirit of Adonai is upon me, therefore he has anointed me to announce good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the imprisoned and renewed sight for the blind, to release those who have been crushed, to proclaim the year of the favor of Adonai. So here it is. If you did not understand Vayichra, Leviticus, you would not understand what Yeshua was saying. Is he saying setting the captives free, the year of Jubilee, the year of the favor of our Lord, everything getting returned back to the Lord. And that's what he's asking for us today, is if we could return back to him, then he will tabernacle with us. He will be in our Mishkan, this temple. He will bless you if you follow his commandments, if you follow his rules, if you don't have any idols in your life. That's what Yeshua was talking about, to say the year of the Yovel, the year of the Jubilee. He's saying to us, follow in my ways. Follow in my commandments. They are just, they are true, they are good, they are loving. And he's saying to us, 
follow for the year of Jubilee. So here when he's talking about in the gospel of Luke, he has come here to set us captives free, to return us back to its original owner. Who is the original owner of us? It is God Almighty, Adonai Sivaot. It is Yehovah, our King. The Yud, He, Vav, He. He's setting us free to go back to His ways. But if you don't want to, it is your choice. But then He said in this parash that He will send terror among us. He will send scorpions. He will send plagues. So the choice is, that we have to make is do we want to hear that shofar for the year of Jubilee is coming. Amen. Beth Goyim is located right outside of New York City. Beth Goyim is a congregation where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua the Messiah as one people. Following the Route 66 King's Highway, Genesis to Revelation, the only perfect word of Adonai. For more information on this end time ministry and how you can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God, call 973-338-7800. That's 973-338-7800. Or check out our website, bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M dot O-R-G. Or houseofthenations.org. Be with us live on the Lord's Day Shabbat. Saturday, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for the sounding of the shofar and the Word of God in English and Spanish. You can also be with us live Tuesday evening at 7.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Messianic Torah Time Bible Study. It's all free. Just click the on-air button. It is that simple. Remember, BethGoim.org or HouseOfTheNations.org. 973-338-7800. 973-338-7800. Welcome back to The Road to Mayor's Village. We now go to our discussion. With me is Brother Joshua Aron, pastor of Hillel Ministries International, Pennsylvania, USA, and worshipinisrael.com, Haifa, Israel. Shalom, Brother Joshua. Shalom. Welcome Hello. to The Road to Mayor's Village. And welcome, of course, to the Philippines. Zetov le'yokam itchem. It's good to be here with you. <laughs> okay, let's go to our discussion. Why do you think the Brit Hadasha reading is Luke 4, 16 to 21? Well, this is one of my favorites. This is where Yeshua came to Nazareth, where he grew up, and as his custom was, he entered the synagogue on the Shabbat and stood up to read from the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Actually, Isaiah 61, 1, 2, where it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach mm. the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are downtrodden, to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. Personally, how does this relate to the Torah portion? I think it's powerful. Hmm. Um, Messiah came, Yeshua came, he told the Pharisees, he came to fulfill the prophets. He is in the prophets. And, and the fact that he stood up and read Isaiah 61 yeah. is quite powerful. Here he was, finally, we've been waiting. The prophets had foretold about his coming. Mm -hmm. And finally, here he is standing there, declaring the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he is the one who's about to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. So that's the messianic fulfillment. Amen, yeah. amen. Well, I know your ministry is through songs, through music, and God speaks through the hearts of uh, men through songs. Do you have a song uh, you can share with us? I'd uh, like to really? share a song today called uh, Hoshiana. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh, you may know it as the English word Hosanna. Hosanna, yes. But the Hebrew that they were saying simply means Hoshiana. Hoshiana. It means save, please. Save, please. Save, please, yeah. Uh -huh. And I'll just sing the chorus. Hoshiana. 
Oceana Oceana in the TV audience now. There are the downtrodden, the blind, the captive. That may be their heart's cry. Amen. Could I ask you to lead them in a short prayer? We read in Isaiah, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he's anointed me to preach the good news. And yeah. <laughs> he, he is the Savior. He has come to bring captives, to set the captives free and to, to provide for the poor. And if you're out there and you want to cry out and say, Hoshiana, and may this be that day where you cry out his name, Yeshua. Lord, I just pray, Lord, that those in our listening audience would cry out to your name and say, save, please, Lord, because only you can save. Yeshem Yeshua. In the name of our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Brother Thanks, Joshua, Pastor Ronnie. for that interesting sharing. Dear audience, if you feel you want to learn more of the Jewish roots of our Christian faith, Join us next Shabbat, 10 a.m. to 6, at Beth Israel Jewish Ministries International Philippines at the Ends of the Earth Prayer Tower, 24th floor, Strata 2000, Ortigas Center. Also, we'd like to invite you to observe the next feast in God's Hebrew calendar, Erev Shavuot, Pentecost, May 26, next Shabbat, 6.30 p.m. at the Ends of the Earth Prayer Tower. Dinner tickets are available. Also, not to forget, for Joshua's CD, Joshua Aaron, Live Messianic Worship, log on to www.worshipinisrael.com or www.theroadtoemmausvillage.live.com. Pastor Joshua, can you please extend the ironic blessing to our audience in Hebrew? I would be happy to. Yevarechecha Adonai veyishmarecha, Yaer Adonai panav elecha veyichunecha, Kisa Adonai panav elecha, Vayasim lecha shalom. Until next time then, this has been your host, Brother Oni, declaring upon you Adonai's ironic blessing in English. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. In the name of Yeshua Mashiach, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Since today we end our study of Ayikra, Leviticus, we say, Hasak. Kazak. When he's <laughs> Kazak. Be strong, be strong, and may we be strengthened. Shabbat Atov, a blessed week ahead of you. Shalom. Shalom. <laughs>